quite a <laughs> impressive group that's part of this extra this external advisory board but uh, a year ago when we met for a couple of days one of them a professor made the statement something to the effect about a book that he had read that said that knowledge is transferred by metaphors and here a little over a year later the only thing i can remember from the two days of meeting really <laughs> or the main thing is that statement that knowledge is transferred by metaphors so i thought i would just take a little bit of time and share some thoughts about water as a metaphor for jesus so i'm going to look at um, three aspects of water as a metaphor for christ so uh, first of all, uh, you know, um, I'd like to talk about the un uniqueness of water as a metaphor for the uniqueness of Jesus. And uh, ten, over 10 years ago, right before I started in water treatment, I was reading a popular science article and there was an editorial that was really cool and was talking about the uniqueness of water. But a lot of the uniqueness of water boils down to its structure as a molecule. Uh, the two hydrogens and the one oxygen, the hydrogens are 105 degrees apart. And that creates a polarity across the axis of the molecule. You get a slight positive charge on the hydrogen side and a slight negative charge on the oxygen side. And it's that polarity that causes clouds to form that uh, causes capillary action in plants to move water up, you know, in some cases, hundreds of feet into the air. Uh, it's that polarity across the axis that causes ice to form at the top of lakes rather than at the bottom. If it formed at the bottom, it would kill off the environment. And uh, anyway, uh, this polarity causes it to work water to behave sometimes as a base, sometimes as an acid, certainly as a solvent. And uh, I read one article and I haven't been able to find it again, but years ago I read an article that said there's like over a million chemical species known on the planet and water holds a unique place out of them all. So how is that a metaphor for Christ? And um, Oh, let's see, what did I do here? <laughs> Looks like I went too far. There we go. Uh, so Jesus is unique for a lot of reasons. I'll just touch on, on uh, three areas here. One is unique in his history. Um, there were all kinds of prophecies about him centuries, even millennia before his birth. Uh, that he would be born of a virgin, that he would be born in the town of Bethlehem. Uh, it was prophesied that he would heal the blind and that he would uh, heal the lame. And it also prophesied his death as crucifixion before crucifixion even existed. Isaiah 53 says he was pierced for our transgressions. Uh, it even prophesies his resurrection in Isaiah 53. It talks about he was assigned a grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. And then it goes on to say that he will see his offspring and his days will pre be prolonged and the will of the Lord will prosper in his hand. And that's after his death. And anyway, uh, you, lots of... Um, scripture there in Isaiah 53 that just uh, talk about how he would be resurrected. So um, he lived to be about 33, and he only had a public ministry of three years, yet uh, here we are 2,000 years later talking about it. It impacted the planet, and uh, that was <laughs> makes him unique. And uh, then the fact that he raised from the dead. Many skeptics have studied it and ended up becoming believers because of the evidence for the resurrection of Christ. Uh, he's unique in his person. He was a masterful teacher. The crowds were astonished at his teaching. Uh, he always focused on others, uh, even on the cross. He's assigning John to take care of his mother. 
and he's talking to one of the criminals being crucified next to him about being with him in paradise. He's focused on ministering to him, even in his death. And his claims make him unique. He, he claimed to be the only way to God. He said, no one comes to the Father except through me. And he claimed to be the source of eternal life. He says, I give them eternal life and they will never perish. Uh, C.S. Lewis said, these are either the claims of a lunatic or a liar or truly the Lord. The Lord, and uh, he concludes, C.S. Lewis concludes that he's the Lord. Secondly, um, a second metaphor is that water is essential for life. And uh, I won't go through all the things, but um, basically uh, life, human life and plant life all depend on water. Uh, the picture kind of depicts a person that is mostly blue, and the idea behind that is that our bodies are made up 80% of water. And uh, so anyway, water is essential for life, and that's a metaphor of Jesus, that he's essential for life. Uh, in John 10.10, 10, uh, he said, I came that they might have life and have it abundantly. Uh, he uh, he's essential for an abundant life, but he's also essential for a fruitful life. He, he used the metaphor of a vine and branches. He says, I am the vine and you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. So uh, he's essential for a fruitful life and he's essential for eternal life. Uh, this is a verse I learned back in college, and it says, and this is the testimony that God gave us eternal life, and this life is in his son. Whoever has the son has life. Whoever does not have the son of God does not have life. So Jesus is essential for life. And then a third metaphor is uh, this idea that water is used for cleaning. We wash our hands. We wash food, uh, all kinds of stuff. Uh, it's very well known that water is very useful in cleaning. And uh, it's a metaphor of Jesus and the cleansing that he brings. Uh, he cleanses us from something that you can't wash off with water or soap or anything else. Um, it says, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. And uh, that is the only cleanser for sin. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And I probably have quoted that verse to God more than any other verse in the Bible. Always needing to remind myself that he's faithful and just to forgive me, but not just to forgive me, but to clean me up, to cleanse me. And that is something that only Jesus can do. Um, last week, or let's see if I have anything. Okay, last week, a friend of mine out of the Clear Blue sent me a song on YouTube and it was a song that was made popular during the Promise Keepers movement, but I thought, heck, I'll just uh, kind of close uh, these thoughts out with just some of the lyrics from that song that we used to sing. It, it says, all I once held dear, built my life upon, all this world reveres and wars to own, all I once thought gain, I have counted loss. Spent and worthless now compared to this. As you can see, I'm an emotional person. Sorry about that. Amen. Knowing Amen. you, Jesus. All right, brother. Knowing you, Jesus. Knowing you, there is no greater thing. You're my all. You're the best. You're my joy, my righteousness. And I love you, Lord. And I'm sure uh, that resonates with each of you. Anyway, uh, 
I, uh, that's the end of, of what I wanted to, to share, uh, just uh, some devotional thoughts. Uh, we'll just uh, open up now for, um, uh, let me see how I get back to the screen here. That was awesome, Randy. Really awesome. It was fabulous, Randy. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. I haven't, um, <laughs> since COVID-19 hit, I've done very few presentations or anything. And, uh, and so anyway, this is one of my first in quite a while. But anyway, thank you. Um, Praise the Lord. He's, a, he's, he's an amazing. You know, I'm, I'm 66. And I began following Christ in high school. And I never ceased to be amazed. You, know, you just, he takes me to the limits of my brain every yeah. nearly every day yeah. and uh, it's like you know how can you know somebody that does that to you but so anyway are there any prayer requests thank you randy yeah thank you i mentioned before chris came on on uh, that he's working on a small systems initiative and this has been something that's been bubbling up with a bunch of requests from different parts of the world for small systems that can address water scarcity or water quality and so chris has taken the initiative maybe you could just expand on what the potential is with our going into india chris yeah, um, just very briefly, because it's really conceptual, but it's it's to find um, a bunch of companies that are able to scale down like, you know, a hundred or a kind of half hijack the, um, I forgot what the name of the channel is, I'm on Global Waterworks there, but. Um, I just put it in the chat. It's the okay. Navajo channel. But. Yeah, thank you, the Navajo channel. So um, if you've got ideas and thoughts or even just want to talk about it with me and hear a little bit more about it. We're just looking for small devices, small ideas to have to get um, get small systems, a little bit of technology, um, and then partner with um, uh, an agency or uh, mentors on, in the state side or in a developing country that have kind of um, senior level water and wastewater operators that can help them and figure out. I mean, it'd be a dream to see if it can get partially funded through the church, through somebody else, but a handful of people off of one water supply. So. Yeah, and just uh, just to build on odd God connections. So when we went to India last year, the a church opened up the door to a uh, the largest marketing agency there that actually leads the conference of 650 pastors around the country, mm. who mm. has agreed to offer a one stop shop to technologies to promote. And this guy is um, yeah. So they're praying. It's called. Um, Adonai Church out of Bangalore, but this is an area where I, some of you have mentioned the desire to help the third world, and so we have a conference February 24th to 26th where Chris will be able to talk about small systems and where they'll talk about the problems with India, and we have really good connections to get in there, so. Yeah. Chris, I'd like to just, as an intercessor, I'd like to um, uh, just give some encouragement. Um, there, years ago, I heard a story of a church that desired to uh, be instrumental in their um, serving a population in Africa, and they realized that one of the things they didn't have was the Western um, perspective on farming, and so they pooled their money, and uh, they did the most amazing thing. They got a Caterpillar tractor, and they freight shipped it to Africa. The oh, idea the was absolutely humongous because this tractor could do what literally oh, hundreds yeah. of people had previously done. Here's what, this came from, I think, uh, the chamber center. What they didn't realize was there were no mechanics. So within six months, the Caterpillar tractor sat idle and it rusted away, having never really achieved its goal. Oh. And and then I want to couple that concept with um, Silicon Valley. Um, I'm trying to remember the law and it's escaping my mind right now, but the idea that miniaturization 
uh, just keeps on going down and down and down. And the, uh, the financial um, uh, ability to provide those resources at a cheaper price uh, is, corresponds with that. So now we have technologies that were literally hundreds of thousands of dollars a decade or two ago in our hands as we walk around. We have more technology in our phones than many uh, multinational corporations had just two decades ago. So here's the encouragement. God is in this kind of business. He is giving wisdom. He's giving insight to people in his kingdom. And the, the, I really see Esther 414 as a critical uh, factor for such a time as this. There is something going on in our world right now that while the enemy ramps up, and there's no doubt that we can see that, what's going on in the heavens is by factors of multiplied factors uh, better than what he's doing. And so we have to look at what he's doing as the counterfeit. Whenever you see a counterfeit, you have to recognize there must be a real because nobody makes a counterfeit out of thin air. It has to supplement or uh, substitute for the real thing. So what you're doing is critical now, but it's the next step. They've, we've created these systems. The Western world has used them for years. Everything uh, operates as a norm. We just, you know, it, it just, we couldn't even survive without the kind of technologies you're talking about. Yeah. Now it's time for miniaturization so that it goes into the hands of everybody. Yeah. Appreciate your encouragement. Yeah, the idea is only loosely formed, but um, definitely I, I remain passionate about it. So yeah. the law you were talking about, Emory, is Moore's law. Um, so as we close here, maybe anybody else have any prayer requests? I have one, but anybody else have one before I do that? Well, I have a quick one. Um, I actually oh. lost a friend of mine last week to a sudden heart attack, and his name is Lyndon, and he was a believer. Praise the Lord. Okay. And Lyndon has got a great view from where he's at right now, and he was a big part of our church family, served as an elder and a mentor, and... Um, I was his son's small group leader, and now his son is my son's small group leader. That's how long <laughs> I've known Lyndon. That's, that's and so just, it's a praise, but obviously he left behind a wife that loves him, and his service is tonight. And I guess my prayer would be that his death would not be wasted, that God makes the most of these things, and that it would be celebration, and guys that he's poured his life into that have no faith would show up and see what faith meant to him. Lord, we lift up Lyndon to you, Lord, as, as Chris has spoken about him, and what a, what a wonderful legacy that, uh, that he has left, but he's left a family, Lord, that whenever someone leaves, we know that certainly he's rejoicing in heaven, but there's an emptiness here left on earth, Lord. We, yeah. we ask you, Lord, that you would fill that em emptiness, com comfort his family. We ask you, Lord, as Chris has said here, that those who knew him, that our believers would be encouraged and those that knew him that aren't believers would would come to know and love you as lord and savior of their life and that be then continue to be his his legacy because a man like this there are likely uh stadiums in heaven full of people mm -hmm. that he witnessed to and you brought to yourself lord in jesus yeah. holy name Amen. Uh, look up chris's Amen. Uh, work that he's doing in in small in the small systems, Lord, I ask you to bless it. You know, Stan brought up what he's doing in Tanzania, Lord, what an amazing work. And it just demonstrates here with Chris and with, with Stan, what one believer can do, what one person can do when you're, you're partnered with, with Jesus. As before we go, I just ask for everybody's for their prayers and continue to keep, keep us in prayers. Mary and I are, are, are looking at how, we um, continue to uh, structure and work Global Water Works um, and build a, a strong and sustainable model. Uh, we've been working on this for a while. We would appreciate your prayers. Um, uh, just as you, as you think about it. Um, Lord, we thank hey. you. Go ahead. Well, I was just going to say real quick, Frank, I just saw headlines last week that 
Istanbul, Turkey is about a month away from day zero, day zero being when they will run out of water. Mm -hmm. And right now the country of Turkey is an extreme water crisis. And so may I add a prayer for them? Please, please go ahead. So Father, we pray for the situation in Turkey. We pray that you would provide not only water, Lord, but the living water. We pray that this might even turn into an opportunity to, to bring you to this country. We commit it to you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Jesus' holy name. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for everybody who, who came this morning, the largest group that we've had and since we've been doing this. And, and we thank you for Randy and, and how you have spoken through him to us and how we can speak and lift up each other in you, Lord, that only you could bring together this, this uh, disparage, this, I'll call it an eclectic group of people around your word um all different walks all different we've done all different things and we've lived our lives and and you know who we are and thank you jesus that we know who you are i ask you to bless each person here there's many unspoken requests that are that are represented here in this this group lord we lift those up to you lord i ask you to bless each one here they bless them and bless their families as they walk and with you, Lord, know and love you for their entire lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Chris Sosnowski is doing ours in two weeks, so you'll see a note. And Randy, if you would send me the, um, the slide deck, I will post it. Okay, should I send it as a PDF or as a PowerPoint? PDF would be good. It would be easier to post. As a PDF? Okay. Yes, Thank you so much for your preparation. Thank you. Thank you. It was great. It, this is great. Always great. Uh, Mary, I just real quickly, I'm still working with the ethics officer, believe it or not. Uh, as a fe former federal worker, I can't just go out, even on a position that offers no pay, I can't just go out and take it. And I can't tell you how, you know, we've exchanged three emails in the last.